The Fine Art of Small Talk by Deborah Fine. Summary The Fine Art of Small Talk teaches us how to begin, prolong, and terminate conversations with anyone, regardless of how shy we believe we are. The truth is that most people seek empathy and compassion rather than advice. Who wants to ride in an elevator with strangers? or make small conversation while getting a haircut. These small connections, however, have far more potential than we give them credit for. They can serve as the foundation for major professional ties, long-lasting friendships, and even romantic relationships. It's entirely normal to feel shy. Many people make the mistake of believing that since they are frightened to talk to others, they will always remain that way. Fortunately, that is not the case our minds are more fluid than we realize. If you think you're the only shy person in the world, look no further than author Deborah Fine, who has been there. She began her job as an engineer because it required less communication. She'd had enough of her circumstances and wanted to make some adjustments in order to meet new people. Fine began taking control of her life after learning to master small chats. We can overcome our fear and improve our communication abilities and the fine art of small conversation is our guide. Improve your verbal abilities. First and foremost, we have control over our small chat abilities, and only we can develop them. It's natural to be terrified of talking to people. Beginning a conversation with strangers is the second highest social anxiety in the Western world. There are a few things you can do to prepare and make things simpler for yourself. Let us begin by letting go of our fear of rejection. Consider this. If someone approached you and struck up a discussion, wouldn't you appreciate their efforts? Beginning a discussion may be the most challenging aspect, but staying out of awkward situations may be the second most difficult. Make eye contact and smile to counteract this. First, introduce yourself and extend your hand for a handshake. Request and remember their name. Try practicing if you're afraid. It may appear strange, but it will be quite beneficial. In addition, not talking to someone may make us appear arrogant or pompous. In the author's experience, a senior vice president of a reputable corporation was frequently present at many of the same events she was in. Deborah observed him but said nothing because she was afraid. She later had to call him to pitch a sale, which he turned down because she ignored him every time they crossed paths. Accept the possibility of rejection. So what if you approached the stranger and they refused to speak to you? Your life would not come to an end. Make no great deal out of rejection. It's a natural, everyday aspect of life, and it shouldn't prohibit you from having the social contacts you could have if you weren't fearful. Understanding what questions to ask ahead of time helps to keep any conversation going. To ask great questions, keep them open-ended at all times. If the answer is yes, no, or good, don't ask it unless it can be followed up with a more in-depth question. Consider the form acronym for easy go-to questions. Ask questions about family, occupation, recreation, and miscellaneous themes. Some points in a conversation. Unfortunately, do not allow for any excellent form inquiries. When this occurs, look around for hints as to what to ask next. You could glance around you, at what people are wearing, or at the specifics of the event you're attending. Therefore, avoid some topics of conversation. If you indulge in debates, or personal catastrophes, people may form a negative opinion of you. Likewise, avoid getting too involved with a casual friend. Therefore, Strike up a conversation with someone about anything. Why do strangers frequently discuss the weather? Because it is a simple and universal subject. Break the ice with a topic that everybody can discuss, even if it isn't the most intriguing issue in the world. The other individual will almost certainly respond with a more interesting question, and you'll be set. Finally, learn to listen actively. How can we have more meaningful discussions? The key is to pay attention. Consider a time when someone did not listen to you, and you'll understand how vital this is. The initial step appears minor but is significant. It's about making sure that everyone you're speaking with believes you're paying attention to them. Take note of your body language. Avoid hunching your shoulders, crossing your arms, or fidgeting. Instead, keep eye contact, nod, smile, 
and maybe lean in a little. Consider the experience of a small kid named Nicholas. Excitedly he informed his father about a terrific day of painting, scoring a touchdown, and eating pizza. Instead of listening, his father was reading the newspaper. When Nicholas became irritated with his father for not listening, he just repeated everything Nicholas had said word for word. What the boy actually desired was a genuine connection. Instead of acting like Nicholas' father, practice verbal clues to show that you're paying attention. Make an effort not to interrupt others as you converse. You could ask a follow-up question or express your enthusiasm about details that interest you. Paraphrasing can also be a powerful tool for making individuals feel heard. Take note of your body language. The majority of a conversation's meaning is conveyed through nonverbal cues. Keep your body language open, smile, and sympathize with the person you're speaking with. People need to see and feel that you're paying attention to what they're saying, and they'll most likely reciprocate. If you have trouble talking to strangers, Consider paying attention to your body language and focusing on becoming an active listener so that others want to talk to you as well. It's especially nice to hear that no one is born shy or introverted, but rather that charisma and charm can be learned. Everyone can become amazing at small talk.